YVBN, the Rich Video Blog Network, home to weekly NFL predictions, great person personality profiles, great professional wrestling video blogs, great sports video blogs, great MBTA video blogs, great entertainment video blogs, plus lots more. Collection of my work goes back to June of 2014 on Facebook, YouTube, and several other social media websites. RVBN, the only video blog on the internet that matters. Time is now 8.13 in the evening. Good evening, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google Plus. This is Richard again, back for your third and final video blog for... Thursday, January 12, 2017. It's about 49 degrees in Berwick, Massachusetts, battling some rain showers, but it's very, very warm. Tonight, temperatures won't go down too much. Tomorrow, high temperatures about 45, 46 degrees, but that's going to probably be achieved at midnight or 1 a.m. because it's going to be a cool front coming. Um down from Canada, but no bitter cold. No, this is not from the North Pole at all. We'll get like modified temperatures like 20s, upper 20s, lower 30s, but it's going to feel much, much colder. But this is where we should be this time of year. Getting 50 degrees in January is like a bonus to us. Don't see it too much, so you have to enjoy it while you can. Some news to report from the RVBN News. Why? Do, 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 do. It's Happy International Kiss a Ginger Day. So hopefully you kiss the ginger. Also, Taco Bell is coming out with the fried chicken shell taco um, bun on January 26th. And for all your fans of American Horror Story, FX has renewed it for two more seasons. That's about it on the news from the RVBN News. Why do, 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 do. Be back in a flash with my third and final video blog subject of the day. Keep calm, everybody. And I'm a Julie Brennan guy. Julie is New Six Orlando, Florida. She's a anchor and also she's a weather lady. Julie has the nicest legs in Orlando, Florida, bar none, and she's my favorite TV blonde in the world. One of these days, I'm going to interview Julie on these video blogs. It's a guarantee, and it's going to be a great interview. That's my goal this year. The time's now 8.16 and in the evening. And you're all going to go to Market Basket today to scratch off millions of dollars scratch tickets. He'll win nothing. I'm back. My third and final video blog subject of the night is about the WWE MSG house show card from August 25th, 1984. This is the continuation of me revealing each and every Madison Square Garden house show card from the WWE from 1983 through 1992 when MSG Network discontinued them, airing them on the air. Actually, MSG's house show cards were shown on television back as early as 1973, but that would be a major, major tax of revealing all of them. It would take years, so I'm just going from like 1983 to 1992 that's the peak of the WWE and the main event for this particular house show was for the Intercontinental Championship Tito Santana facing off against Greg the Hammer Valentine plus other matches calling the action was Guerrero Monsoon and his lordship Alfred Hayes he, um, Guerrero Monsoon and Lord Alfred Hayes. This was the first time they were paired up as a commentating duo. They would call most of the MSG house show cards throughout the late the 80s and early 90s. And here's the card. The first match was making its Madison Square Garden debut, the Ugandan giant Kamala with classy Freddy Brassie and Friday. That was the original handler 
of Kamala. Eventually, Kimchi was a few years later. Kimchi is the Brooklyn brawler Steve Lombardi. Um, Kamala faced off against one of the icons of the WWE at this time, Chief J. Strombo. But this was a total squash match. Kamala pinned Chief J. Strombo in about two and a half minutes with the splash. And, and, and he was like... Turn, had, um, Kamala turned Chief J. Strongbow over. Total squash match. The next match, it was B. Brian Blair facing off against Iron Mike Sharp. And this is like a little Madison Square Garden only f feud. And it was back and forth, back and forth. Ending had both wrestlers outside the ring. The referee counted it. And a through the match out, so it was a double count out. The next match was Quick Draw Rick McGraw facing off against Salvatore Belomo, who was substituting for the magnificent Don Morocco, who was who did not show up for this card. I don't know why, maybe he was under the weather. And this match was like two faces, and it was a real exciting match, scientific, what Guerrero Monsoon would always say about wrestlers like Rick, Rick McGraw and Salvatore Beloma, they were two, like, two crackerjack. Went through, uh, this match went to a 20 minute time limit, time limit draw, but actually was only about 18 and a half minutes. Sometimes when there's 20 minute time limit draws or 30 or 45 or 60 minutes, they exaggerate it exactly like a few minutes few minutes shaved off just to save time. The next match was for the WWE Tag Team Championships. It was the challenges, the Wild Samoans, Afan Sika facing off against the WWE Tag Team Champions, Cap Captain Ragnick Dick Murdoch, and Adrian Adonis. He was an adorable back then, and there was a special guest referee. It was Captain Lou Albano, and Lou Albano was not an impartial referee for this one. He, like, sided all the time with Dick Murdoch and Adrian Adonis in this match, and when Arthur knocked out um, Adrian Adonis, um, um, he, he called for the bell because Sika did not have as he did not he was not holding the lean ropes that was so bullshit he gave the match to Adonis and Murdoch they retained the tag team titles by disqualification and afterwards um, Captain Lou attacked Arthur and he was siding with Murdoch and Adonis but Sika made in for the save just just that was just total bullshit and Goel Monsoon had like one of his quotes that has to be the walking advertisement for birth control. You gotta love Goel Monsoon's quotes a lot. That's one of them. The next one was the returning Olympic strongman Ken Patera facing off against Pat Patterson. Patterson and Patera had a long running field over the WWE Intercontinental Championship in 1980. Ken Patera beat um, Pat Patterson at Madison Square Garden for the Intercontinental title and Ken Patel was returning to the WWE and Patterson was basically a jobber at this point and Ken Patel wins by putting the full Nelson swinging full Nelson on the first ever Intercontinental Champion Pat Patterson the next match was a, gr a grudge match it was Ivan Polish Power Putski facing off against Jesse the body Ventura and this match was a, an awesome match 12 minutes back and forth lots of power moves in this match and they had both Ventura and Putski fighting over the at the ring apron and the referee was counting both wrestlers out Ventura hits Putski with the foreign object he golf goes off the ring apron the body comes back in and he wins the match and as was lucky, if he's a foreign object, the referee didn't see it. If he saw it, he would have disqualified Ventura. Next match was a six-man tag. 
two out of three falls. It was the fabulous Freebirds, Michael P.S. Hayes, Terry Bam Bam Gordy, and Buddy Jack Roberts with David Wolf as their manager. Facing off against Butcher Bashan, Ron Shaw, and the Duke of Doors tester, Pete Doherty. This was like a total squash match. The Freebirds won in two straight falls. It was the only time the Freebirds wrestled at Madison Square Garden. The next match was another grudge match. It was Soup, Soup, Superfly Jimmy Snooker facing off against Rowdy, Rowdy Piper. And this was a grudge match that started on Piper's pit when Piper hit the coconut on Jimmy Snook, Superfly Snooker, and this was, you know, a very grudge match. The rules were breaking. It wasn't a sketch it, a catch it as can can match. It wasn't a scientific match. It was it was off uh, off the charts. And he had Rowdy well, Piper attack Snooker outside the ring, and he like injured Snooker's neck. Delivered several chair shots to his neck. And Piper goes back in the rain. And he wins the match by count out. Snooker was carried out on the rain on a stretcher. I guess to sell the storyline, he was out several weeks. Uh, I, I think something that Jimmy Snooker was, was like having a lot of his problems with demons. And he probably needed to take the time off. The n next match was Terry Daniels facing off against Freddie my Luzio substituting for the for the the Frenchman Rene Goulet who wants to show maybe he was not feeling good. And Terry D Daniels beat Fred Marchucci in about three minutes with a with a roll up. But not not most of the match wasn't called by Girl and I seem they were reporting how serious Jimmy Snooker's injuries were. And the main event on this MSG House Show card it was Tito Santana defending the WWE Intercontinental Championship facing off against Greg the Hammer Valentine. And this match was pretty, pretty good. Ending had um, Tito Santana beat um, um, the Hammer with the flying body cross. One, two, three. Tito retains the IC Championship, but afterwards, Greg the Hammer to Valentine attacks Tito and his knee and stuff, and this it sets up for Tito to lose the Intercontinental Cha Championship to Greg the Hammer Valentine at a WWE TV taping in October of 1984 because Tito Santana needed legitimate knee surgery. So this Madison Square Garden House show card was kind of pitiful besides um, Santana and Valentine and Piper and Snooker. And the other matches were like, you know, a little bit of toilet matches. Like, they weren't spe very special. Some of them was basically what you could what you could have saw on All-Star Wrestling and Championship Wrestling, the uh, syndicated television shows of the WWE back in the day. Tomorrow will end the series of five for the MS. G House Show card reviews that I'm going to be doing, and the, it, the next one will be September 22nd, 1984. That's tomorrow, and it's a debut of one of the most famous managers in wrestling history to the garden. I'm talking about the Weasel. Oh, I mean, Brain, Bobby the Brain Heenan. And that's about it on that. I'll be back tomorrow. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google Plus. For more video blogs coming for you as usual. First video blog, personality profile. Tomorrow's personality profile will be about Hockey Hall of Famer Tiny Thompson, who wore number one for the Boston Bruins for many years. Second video blog of the day will be about why boxing, professional boxing, is dying. And the third and final video blog of the night will be about the last of the MSG house show cards I'm reviewing this week. It will be a, from the WWE. It will be about the aforementioned 922-84 house show from Madison Square Garden with Big John Studd facing off against Hulk Hogan. Keep calm, everybody. I'm a Judith and I'm Molly Rose. We'll have WCCOX on this nice leg.
Elizabeth Hatz, also standing. She's best. Amy Sweezy is awesome, awesome, Amy. And then the Church of WPIX Channel of New York, such a like in Cougars, got the best like New York State band on. Bob Gibbs of ABC 11 has a sweet southern accent, best like New Orleans, North Carolina. And Claire of WHGH Channel 7 in Boston rocks, and she has the best legs in Boston. And Alio uh, Wally, a meteorologist for WABI Channel 5 in Bangor, Maine, is su such a awesome lady. She's got the best legs in Maine. And in the words of WWE Hall of Famer, good old J.R. Jim Ross, that time, Jezebel. See you later.